All right, you guys, how did you think of that introduction to uh, my final thoughts on the Idaho 4 murder case? Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Hopefully I'm talking loud enough because sometimes the audio on my phone does not do justice. So, And that's why I'm dressed so nice because I just got out of church. But without further ado, let's go. So uh, a couple of videos ago, the first video I made about this uh, murder case, um, I gave some of my thoughts. But that wasn't like my official thoughts or final thoughts. This is this video. This is my final thoughts and official thoughts on what I think went down on the early morning hours of Sunday, November 13th, 2022. So, um, I believe that Brian Koberger came through the back, uh, side, the black, came through the back of the window. Um, the slide door glass window. I don't know why that was so hard for me to um, des describe, but I believe he came through the back door, came inside, and it went upstairs first. Because last time when I thought about this case, I thought that uh, Brian uh, went and attacked Ethan and Zana first. But I think um, Brian went upstairs first, because I think... Kaylee and Maddie were the targets, especially Kaylee. I think she was the target, and I think he knew which room was them, or at least um, that they lived upstairs, because Brian was, of course, stalking them at least 12 times prior to the murders in the late morning hours, so, um, yeah, so, uh, so, Zana received a DoorDash uh, around 4 a.m. It could have been a little before 4 a.m., a little bit after 4 a.m. And who knows, Brian Koberger could have been part of that DoorDash delivery because there are no DoorDashes, I believe, in Moscow, Idaho. There are no, there are no jack-in-the-boxes I met, not DoorDash. There are no jack-in-the-boxes in Moscow, Idaho. Uh, there is a DoorDash in Pullman, Washington, just a few blocks away from where Brian Koberger's apartment was. So, did Brian Koberger order Jack in the Box? Or maybe right before they closed? But how would he know Zana, though? Like, how would he know her? Like, I don't know how he would know her. Maybe they met somewhere? I don't know. Uh, Zana's sister also went to Washington State University. So maybe she ran into Brian Koberger a little bit. But I don't know if that's been released or not. But, um... Yeah, what if Brian delivered it and was planned? He's like, okay. And he was watching. He, but why? I don't know why Brian would think to order a DoorDash when he knows that someone's going to be awake. Like, why would he want to do that? Um, but this is what I'm thinking. Like, um, so Zana opened the front door for the DoorDash, got her DoorDash, and maybe she, maybe she didn't order it, but she had to have it had her name on it. And she was awake, too. Um, so maybe she brought in her food for a second in her room with Ethan in there. And maybe that's when, when they were in their room for a couple minutes, maybe saying, hey, did you order this DoorDash for me or whatever? And he'd be like, no. Maybe when they were talking in their room, maybe that's when Brian came in through the back door when Ethan and Zana were not on the main level hallway. And maybe he hurried and ran upstairs quietly and went and got um, Kaylee and Maddie first, killed them. And maybe um, Zana and Ethan heard something upstairs while maybe they were eating or whatever. Or maybe while Zana was putting her DoorDash delivery bag in, in the kitchen out there by the glass door by the window because there is proof that car that jack-in-the-box was by the sink because uh, there was a picture of that from the investigation a couple weeks ago um, and it had her name on it Zana so maybe after she put while she was putting her bag out because she didn't want to eat it all maybe she heard something going on upstairs maybe and she's like someone's here and maybe brian heard that right when he was finishing them off and he hurried and ran downstairs and went 
and, and Ethan came out when she said that, and maybe he was attacking Xana or something while Ethan came out, and Ethan screams because it's proven that Ethan was screaming. He's like, Xana! And maybe he was trying to fight for her, and then he got killed, and they, because... Because if, I, I feel like if Xana and Ethan got killed first, I feel like that would have woken up Kaylee and Madison. I feel like and they would have came downstairs and heard something. I mean, they probably would have gotten killed anyway, unfortunately. But I feel like if Ethan and Xana were killed first, Madison and Kaylee definitely would have woken up and they definitely would not have been asleep. So I definitely think that Brian went upstairs first, killed Kaylee and Madison, just like that video I showed you at the start of this video. Um, and then I think he went downstairs, heard Xana, and may maybe they were even coming towards him upstairs, and then they were fighting on their way downstairs, and then pushed him in their, uh, room, but, yeah, who, who knows, that's what I think happened, I think Brian went through the back door, went upstairs as Xana was talking to Ethan in her room or whatever with the door dash, and... Brian probably knew people were awake as he was going upstairs because he had to have heard Xana or Ethan talking as he was going upstairs. Um, so he killed them off first. And that's probably when uh, Dylan, one of the surviving roommates, thought she heard Kaylee playing with her dog because the dog was barking and maybe um, Dylan thought, oh, Madison or Kaylee's playing with her dog and heard, like, stuff going on up there as she was being killed, and she thought she was playing with her dog, maybe, and then went out to take a look, just like in that video, and no one, and she could not see Brian because he was upstairs finishing him off, and then the second time when she opened the door, I think she heard, like, crying and whimpering, and that's, pro and she didn't see Brian then either, probably because Brian was, attacking Zayna and Ethan during that time, so she couldn't see him. She could, heard no she could hear noises, though. And then the third time, when she opens the door, she sees Brian walking towards her as he was leaving out. Now, now, did Brian actually see Dylan? Or, I mean, it was dark, of course. It was really dark. So may he, Brian probably thought that was like a closet, maybe, or something. He probably thought that was a closet or something like that. So maybe he didn't really think much of it and just ran out. And maybe, because there were loud screaming, like that video I showed you guys, there was loud screaming going on. And maybe Brian thought, well, the other roommates are going to wake up. I need to hurry and leave before I get caught. So that could have been too. But, yeah. And I, I'm tired of people just um, being so mad at Dylan. I mean, none of us. We're in that situation. We don't know what we would have done in that situation. Yes, you would think to call the cops, but you don't know what you would do in that situation. And I don't like I don't like how the freaking media is not leaving Dylan alone either. Like they're taking pictures of her, like at her house when she's outside, when she's out for a jog. They're kind of stalking her. Like if I was Dylan, I would hate that attention. It's like leave me alone. Like I don't want another predator trying to find me or whatever like that. It's like just. Just leave Dylan alone, guys. She definitely did not have to do anything with this. She was definitely not part of it. Like, she was in shock. She didn't know what to do. And she probably wanted to call 911, but she didn't want to be too loud for the killer to hear someone in there calling 911. And then he probably could have killed her off before the cops could get there, you know? So... Yeah, we don't know what we would have done in that situation. I mean, we would think we would call 911. I definitely wouldn't have waited eight hours, though, to call. Maybe I would have waited, like, an hour or two when I hear it's quiet, and then maybe I would have called. But definitely not eight hours. Definitely not eight hours to call. Um, but, yeah, that's what I think happened. And then I, I don't think when Brian came back later that morning around 9 was it 9.12 to like 9.25 or whatever like that, he came back to the area later that morning, just a few hours later. I don't think Brian came back into the house. I think he was outside the house, maybe maybe trying to see if, it, if like the door was still open in the back or seeing if anyone was moving or anything. He, he could have came back in the house, but I don't think he did. I think that would have been too stupid of him to go back in the house when people could have been awake or, you know, neighbors could have went in there because it was a party house. 
So I don't think he went back in the house when he arrived again. But, yeah, uh, that's my final thoughts. Um, at the end of this video, I'm going to give some loving, loving memory videos to the four victims that passed. Because this should be about them. This is not about Brian Koberger. We should always remember um, those loving victims. Kaylee, Madison, Zana, and Ethan. We all need to remember them and cherish them. I did not know them personally. Uh, probably most of us didn't know them personally until... We didn't even know who they were until after this tragic event happened. So, yeah. But, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, give it a like. Share it with your friends. This is what I think happened. Um, and I do think that the surviving roommate downstairs... I forgot her name. Um, but I think she also did hear noises as well. I mean, how can you not hear noises, especially scary noises at night? So that's what I think happened. Um, once again, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. And here is the loving memory videos of the four victims. Enjoy.